If you are getting ready to explant, or maybe you just explanted, or even if you just explanted a month ago, six months ago, and you're looking for maybe some different supplements or things to do to help you along with your healing journey from breast implant illness, I'm going to share with you almost everything that I did, took, and went through after my own explant surgery that helped me heal and beat breast implant illness. Back when I was struggling with breast implant illness symptoms, my main symptoms were fatigue, brain fog, hip joint pain, hair loss, anxiety, depression, sometimes insomnia, swollen lymph nodes, blurry vision, um, gasping for air. Those were the main symptoms for me personally. So a lot of these supplements and things that I'm going to be showing you are to help with those symptoms. But if there's something specifically that you're struggling with, maybe a symptom that I don't cover on here and you're needing maybe a little bit extra guidance or support or like a recommendation for it, first I would definitely recommend looking at Google and researching for yourself. But if you can't find anything, you know, you could definitely run it by me and ask me and I'll see if I can't at least point you in the right direction. I am going to cover a lot in this video. I'm going to be showing you a lot of different things that I took and did. So before we actually get started, I would really recommend having a piece of paper or pen around so that you can make a note of maybe a supplement that I mentioned or something that I said that I did. And also maybe pausing the video at the time that I said it because I do plan to timestamp everything that I am gonna talk about in this video. So like if I talk about a certain supplement at a certain time, down in the description area, I'm gonna put the time that I started to talk about it and the supplement name, and then all you would have to do is really just tap on that and it'll take you directly to that time in the video when I talked about that supplement. So I hope that makes sense. And nothing that I recommend or suggest here is to be taken as medical advice. If there is something that you do plan on trying or doing, I always recommend running it by your explant surgeon or your doctor first, just to be sure that it is safe for you, especially if you are on any kind of medications or if you are dealing with any kind of physical symptoms, because the last thing I would wanna do is further hurt you um, and make your symptoms worse. These are all just things that I did and that I took that helped me. And I can just promise you that everything that I'm about to share are things that I took and that I did and that I saw results with. I'm not somebody who just recommends a bunch of things that I never even took myself. So you can guarantee that everything here, all the brands and everything that I'm about to show you um, are things that I've actually tried and took. And I didn't take everything at once, so don't think I took all of these supplements at once. I will try to do my best to really organize this and show you like what the supplement is and when I took it and what it is good for. So let's get into it. For the first five to six weeks after my explant, I really just focused on my nutrition and upping my protein, which if you don't know, after surgery, it's really good to increase your protein to one to 1 1.2 grams of protein per body weight that you are because it does help with wound healing and muscle healing. So I upped my protein, of course I rested, I supported my gut health and my immune system health and then also my mental health. As I was resting and laying around, I would visualize and I would visualize myself happy and full of energy and doing things that maybe I haven't been able to do in a long time and doing them like with ease and without pain and just having fun and being able to move and not be so tired. So I really just visualized how I wanted to feel and what I wanted to feel like um, after going through all of this. And I will say that for me personally, it helped. I am a huge fan of visualization. Anytime I've ever been sick, I have visualized things going away and things improving. And I've always gotten better a lot quicker than my family. And if you aren't already doing so, I really recommend removing as many toxins from your environment as you can because removing those toxins and not being exposed to those toxins from the beginning is just as important as actually going through a detox. Some things to consider would be like your cosmetics and your household cleaning products, any kind of plastics that you can 
turn to glass or swap out for glass, you know, your makeup, your air fresheners, hopefully you don't have any in your house because they're really bad for your hormones. Um, but just little things out here that you can do to help minimize your toxic load. Um, that would be the first step before actually going through a detox. And I find that when I talk about detox or when I see other women post about detoxing, there's usually two camps. So there's like the very few women who are like, you know, your body will detox on its own. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to take anything extra, you know, detoxing is a scam and this and that, and your body knows what to do. And then there's the other camp who is like, tell me all the things to do. Tell me all the things to take. And they actually like go through detoxes um, and all of that. And so while yes, your body does detox, that's what your liver's for, that's what your kidneys are for, that's what your skin is for, um, and all the other major organs that help with detoxification, your systems only detox at a certain pace. So it's only moving this slow to cleanse you. But if you're bringing in toxins from all over the place, from your air, from your clothes, from your air fresheners, from your food, um, from water, you know, from all the different angles, and you're bringing in more toxins than your body can get rid of, over time, your toxic load, your toxic burden is just going to overflow. And that's why we end up feeling like crap. And that's why our heavy metals, when we test them, are super high because our body can only get rid of and detox and cleanse us at a certain pace. And oftentimes, and especially when we have breast implants, which are made of nothing but toxins, oftentimes we take in too many toxins and our body can't keep up. And that's why we end up feeling sick and we get insomnia and we have neurological issues, um, you know, and the whole plethora. I don't need to really get into it. I firmly believe in detoxing. Now, it doesn't have to be anything like crazy or harsh or brash, or you don't even have to spend thousands of dollars on it if you want to. Fine, that's great. But I personally feel like you don't really need to. I feel like there's a lot of supplements and specifically like herbs out there that do help to nourish and cleanse specific organs like your liver and your kidneys and your blood that you can take and that it they do help you. And especially a binder. Um, you want to make sure that you are taking a binder the entire time while you're detoxing. And I'll show you the one that I took and the one that I recommend inside of my healing and detox program, the BII Bridge. Um, I'll show you the exact binder that I have everybody taking. So I just kind of wanted to share a little bit about detoxing because I know a lot of times women do go through one after their explant, um, understandably. With all of that being said, let's get into like what I actually did and took and I'm going to show you all the products over here so that you can see them and just take notes if there's like one that you're like, oh, I should probably look into that because I am going to share all the links that I can underneath in the description area um, so that you can be like oh yeah she talked about that supplement let me like click on the link and that'll show you everything about the supplement all the health benefits what's in it and all of that because if i actually spent time going through every single supplement and every little thing that i did that i have over here this video would probably end up being an hour long so i'm just going to basically show you the brand that i took and what i took it for and then there'll be links to those supplements underneath in the, in the description area. First thing, step one, the first thing I did to heal from breast implant illness was I explanted. I removed my breast implants. That helped with like 80% of my issues and my challenges that I was going through with my health. So step one is explanting. Step two, over here with some of the supplements that I took. In no particular order, we have Calm Magnesium. This I took every night before bed and it just helped to relax me. And magnesium, our body has like 600 different functions that require magnesium. And so having magnesium in your diet um, is super important. And a lot of us don't get enough magnesium. So just one tablespoon every night before bed um, really helped calm me down and just helped me feel better after my explant. And because I did struggle with anxiety and depression, probably a lot of it rooted from just the unknown of what is going on with my body, I did have a couple supplements that I took and one was passion flower. There's lots of studies on passion flower in regards to anxiety and insomnia. 
This helps me more than anything. Um, for instance, we were flying the other week, a couple weeks ago for eight days. Our son wasn't coming with us and I couldn't sleep the night before. And I was like, why am I sitting here struggling when I can take something? So I took a half a dropper of this and I went right to sleep and I slept really good for a few hours before the flight. So passion flower, look into it, lots of research on it, especially in regards to anxiety and insomnia. And if you need some support with your mood and energy and maybe even anxiety and depression, L-theanine is another good supplement to look into. Um, I always recommend with everything, starting off with a half dose to just see how your body responds. Sometimes it doesn't respond at all, which is cool. And then if you feel like you're good to move forward, then of course, take the full dose of whatever's on these bottles. Another supplement that's really good for mood and depression is saffron. And this was the one that I took and take sometimes, especially around my period when I'm feeling a little bit slumpy. Again, there's lots of studies on saffron as well. It says uplifts and maintains a healthy mood. I feel pretty good and pretty chill when I take these and none of these will like knock you out or anything. They'll really, especially if you have a lot of anxiety and you're super anxious, maybe before your surgery um, or for whatever other reasons are in your life. Taking any of these would be really helpful, especially around those times, just to help center you and ground you. And we have lysine. This is my go-to when I am feeling super fatigued, maybe from Epstein-Barr virus. So I had the Epstein-Barr virus and I do know that a lot of women with breast implants have the Epstein-Barr virus as well. And anytime that I feel like I have something coming on, then I take this and it just kind of like knocks it out within like a day or two for me personally. Um, so lysine, I take 3000 milligrams per day. So I take 1000 milligrams three times a day. This always helps me. This is like my go-to staple um, in my supplement cabinet. Then if you're looking for any kind of brain health or brain support supplements, I love Brain MD by Dr. Amen. Uh, this is the brain and body power um, supplement pack. And it comes in these little pouches and you take two of these pouches every single day. These are literally the only fish oil tablets I've taken where I don't get the fish burps. I've taken quite a few other brands of fish oils and I've, I'm always left with like this just fishy burp in my throat. I don't get it with these. So I highly recommend if you're looking just for general brain health and brain support supplements, this would be the brand I definitely recommend. All right, now we're moving into my absolute favorite brand. Um, this is the brand that I recommend in the BII Bridge. So anything that you can find from, from this brand, like their vitamin C or their probiotics or their amino acids, um, their liver detox, their lymphatic detox, their fulvic acid minerals, and then of course their zeolite detox binder, which is the one that I recommend. This will be the brand that I recommend here. And I have a lot here, so I'm just going to show you in no particular order. So I take their complete amino acid complex and this is something that you take in between meals and it helps with your immune function, brain function, lean muscle retention and your energy levels. So if you are somebody who does not eat enough protein and enough meat, I would recommend this um, to take in between your meals. Then we have their probiotics. So you just take one a day on an empty stomach. Most of this stuff here you take on an empty stomach and you squirt into some water and take it, which I'll show you in a second. This is their fulvic acid and trace ocean minerals, which is good for detoxification, anti-inflammation, energy, and hormone balance. This is something that I take every day by them also. So if you do drink filtered water, great, good. Um, definitely recommend drinking filtered water. But oftentimes when you do filter your water, you can take away a lot of the really essential uh, minerals in there. And so this, I do 30 drops, I believe it is, within like a whole day. So you just take like one dropper, we'll go um, throughout the day. You can see it there, liquid gold. Then we have their zeolites, which is their binder. And it says heavy metal detoxification, cellular detoxification, toxin removal, and cellular health. 
So you take one dropper um, diluted in water on an empty stomach. And the thing with binders is that you want to take them away from food and away from medication. So a lot of women will take this at nighttime, but um, Zuma Nutrition, Zeolites, and I do have a 15% off code for Zuma Nutrition. So anything that you get, you will get 15% off. If you struggle with hormone imbalances or PMS, really bad cramps, moodiness, anything like that, they do have their supplement called Happy Hormones. And again, I think you take it five pumps on an empty stomach in some water. So this was the one that I was taking um, for my hormones. Highly recommend. I recommend everything by Zuma Nutrition. And the reason why I love them is the people who are on their team actually formulating these products to the way that they make and harvest these products, um, to the purity, to the quality, everything top notch up to my standards. And I've tried a lot of brands. And of course, like all of these other brands are really good too, because Zuma Nutrition isn't going to make every single supplement out there. But the ones that I can get from Zuma Nutrition, I will always get from Zuma Nutrition. And then some other brands that I love are the Soul Gar brand. Um, Jaro is another good brand that I love. And then Youth Theory is another good brand that I love. Also Gaia is another brand that I love, but this will always be my go-to. And then last from them that I currently have is their Parasite Detox. So if you think you have parasites, which pretty much everybody does, um, I recommend going through this around a full moon because that's when parasites tend to be more active in our body. And when you do purchase this, they send you an entire guide that shows you um, how to take the parasite cleanse and different information on how to get the most of this parasite cleanse. So after you sign up, they typically send a lot of emails with a lot of really good information on their products and how to get the most out of them. All right, so now to hair growth. Something that I have been using since after my explant, like probably two to three months after my explant is this Eye Restore shampoo and conditioner. Let me see if I can get it here. There we go. I love it. I've been using it for almost four years now and I'm honestly like a little scared to use anything else because this works so well on my hair. I usually buy the three month supply of shampoo and conditioner and I've literally been using it for well over four years now since my ex plant, but it does help with hair thinning and it helps to prevent hair loss and thinning. Um, my hair's super soft and it smells good and I just love it. This is probably the only shampoo and conditioner I'll ever use for the rest of my life. And if you're looking to grow your hair, uh, Vegamore has their Grow Serum and you just take a little dropper and you, Put it along your hairline and I put it up here and I put it like behind my hairline and just everywhere on your scalp and then I like rub it in like this. The only thing is if you do do this, which I've seen personal really good results with, my hair's getting there, it is a little oily. So what I personally do is if I know I'm going to be showering that day, I will put this in my hair on my shower days because it does make my hair and my scalp really oily. So if I know I'm going to be washing my hair by the end of the day, I'll put this in for like a few hours or half the day. And then obviously I'll go take a shower at nighttime um, and get it out. All right. And a couple more things. I found this on Etsy because I have like fibrocystic breasts to where my breasts and especially my armpit area in here gets really tender right before my period. And I found this, it's called Beautiful Breast Balm. And I'll see if I can find my order on Etsy and see if I can find her link. But this has been really helpful in stimulating and getting rid of some stagnant lymphatic fluid um, in this area, which is essentially what's happening. So I use this on there and I rub it in right after the shower. And it smells just like rose. It smells so good um, and it's really helped me. It says it may, may improve um, circulation and stimulate lymphatic system to soothe sore breasts. And honestly, it does help me. And with that, 
the good old dry brush. You could start this like two weeks after your explant. There's lots of videos on YouTube on how to dry brush because there is a system to it. You want to make sure you're always going towards your heart and you just do gentle strokes up towards your heart and you can do your breast area, which usually feels so good. And you'll go down like this and then you'll go around and up and all that. And there's lots of videos on YouTube that will show you how to do this properly, but this is something that I would definitely recommend after your explant because you are probably gonna be sitting around a lot more. And this is just gonna help with your lymphatic system and keeping those fluids moving and circulating because they do get stagnant if you are laying around for a long amount of time. Let's get into some books that I recommend. So after my explant, I was reading and I was watching a lot of movies. So three books that I recommend are Busting Free by Dr. Amanda Savage. It actually just came out. Mind um, and Body Balancing by Osho and then Heal. These are three books that I'm always recommending. You'll always see me recommending um, for after your explant surgery. This one is all about like compassion and acceptance after your explant. And these two are about using your mind and your thoughts and your beliefs and your energy and your attitude in helping your body heal. Um, lots of science behind this. There's actually a documentary called Heal. It should be on Netflix still, it might not be, um, but I watched that first and then I got this book and I've highlighted so much in this book it's a, it's just an amazing book and this is one that i definitely recommend if you are about ready to explant get this book and read it as you are healing because i don't know about you but i believe in the mind and its ability to help heal the body and then a couple things just to kind of round this video off if you've been with me the whole time thank you so much i know this was a lot um, but this is like everything that I did and I really wanted to share it with you and I knew it would take a lot of time um, But it's all good stuff here and I've seen really good results with all of this uh, But just to kind of go over a couple more things that I did after my explant was around the six week mark I started to exercise so I just started to lift my arms up and everything that I did I did very slow and I did with light weights. I will share some videos down below um, that I have on this channel about exercise safety. I have some stretches that you could start with after your explant that will help with your muscles. Um, and then I also have an actual exercise video for your upper body for when you are start, when you are ready to start exercising, you know, how to do it safely um, after your explant. And then around the six week mark, I also started to detox. So I started to take the binders, dandelion tea, milk thistle, um, just more uh, supplements that facilitated a detox and got the toxins out of my cells and out of my tissues. Um, I didn't wanna do anything for the first month, five weeks, because I just wanted to allow my body to heal and cleanse at its own pace without me interfering with anything, which is something that I always recommend. So after six weeks is when you can start like taking more detox-y type of supplements and doing more detoxy type of things. And then last, uh, rebounding. So rebounding is on like a little trampoline and all you do is you just do little hops. So you're not like jumping up and down or anything, but you're just really doing little hops. And what that does is it also helps to stimulate and get any stagnant lymphatic fluid moving throughout your body. Um, you wanna keep your lymphatic system flowing and nice and strong and moving because it does um, kind of intertwine with your immune system. So. If you have any questions about any of this, or if there is something that you're considering taking um, and you just wanna run it by me, definitely comment down below. I will do my best to include a link to all of this down in the description area. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.